Hey everyone, my name is Tadej Blažić. I am a freelance 3D designer and today we'll start our extra quick MoGraph tutorial series. Together we'll create a seamless looping animation using techniques that will also speed up your creative process in Blender. This is going to be a step-by-step -step process so even the absolute beginners can follow our series. In this lesson we take a look at several techniques including simple hard surface modeling with bevel modifiers for our pedestal, using bezier curves to create curved objects that will help us create our division object for the clouds, displacement and booleans for the clouds and how to create extra quick grass with the particle system. So let's get into the video. Okay so let's start. We'll first do the pedestal. Now, I want to delete everything in the scene, so I'll press A to select everything, X, and then delete. And press 1 on your numpad to go into front view, and I'm going to shift A, add a mesh, and I'm going to add a circle. This is going to be our pedestal. Now I'm going to press tab to go into edit mode, and I'm going to press E to extrude, Z, so I'm extruding on the Z axis, and then I'm just going to pull it up by 0.2. So I have this lovely strip. I'm going to loop select all of the bottom vertices by pressing Shift Alt and then right clicking on the bottom vertices. And then I'm going to press F to make a face. I'm going to do the same thing on top. So I'm going to go Shift Alt and then just select the top vertices and press F. So I have a nice closed cylinder. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to press I for inset and I'm going to drag it in towards the center, right about here. The second thing I want to do is I want to just inset again so I can drag a little bit closer. And then in this loop here, I'm going to go to the top left, choose the face select and again, loop select by holding shift alt and right clicking the loops. I'm going to press I again for inset, hold control and then drag my mouse to the right so I can pull down the inset. Now I want to just fine tune our pedestal so I'm going to go into my modifier properties over here. To the right I'm going to add a modifier and I'm going to add a bevel modifier. And after that, I'm going to add a subdivision modifier. Now, I want to make these edges sharp because I'm having some issues with wrinkling. I'm going to press N and I'm going to go into edit mode. In edit mode, in my top left corner, I'm going to choose the edge select. And then I'm going to choose the edges that I want to be sharp. So the top ones, the bottom one. And then I can also go with Z into wireframe mode and I can select the edges that are inside of the nook that we have created, like so. And we have them all selected. Now what I want to do is increase the mean bevel weight to one. And when I have this increased, I'm going to choose the limit method in my modifier tab to be weight. And now the modifier is affecting just those corners. We can make it just a bit sharper. So I'm just going to add another segment and maybe we can also pull back the offset. So the closer you go to zero, the sharper your corners will be. So this is completely dependent on what you want. For this scene, we want something just slightly chunkier. I can also increase the viewport and then I can shade smooth my object so I can see how it's behaving. Maybe we can drag the viewport down just slightly or we can just leave it up. Offset, we can just leave a, say a fatter angle, okay. Now that we have our pedestal, we can do our glass enclosure or rather the object that's going to be dividing our clouds. However, we won't be using the same technique. We'll actually be adding, so shift A, a Bezier curve, and I'm going to press GZ and drag it up. I'm going to rotate it on the Y axis, like so, and I'm going to rotate it on the Z axis. So I have this bump on my right side. And 
in the modifiers tab, I'm going to add a screw modifier. This doesn't look right because we have to change the axis to X. Now, if I want to make a glass enclosure, sort of like a snow globe type of enclosure, I'm just going to grab the bottom vertex. So I'm going to select it and I'm going to rotate it on the Y axis minus 45 degrees. And then I'm going to drag it outside by just pressing G and I can just drag it outside and position it however I want. Now I can go also into wireframe mode by pressing Z because I want to grab this vertex and I want to fit it inside the nook that we have created earlier. I'm going to select the top vertex, rotate it on the Y axis by 90 degrees and then I'm just going to try and decide on the shape of my enclosure, how I want it to look. You can also press 5 on your numpad to see how the object looks in autographic mode. And since we'll be using autographic mode for our camera, I think it's very useful to use this perspective for now. Perfect. You can also sharpen the corners by dragging the vertices that are around the main vertex around. So maybe I can just drag this one on the Z axis so it's a bit chunkier. You can also go and correct your pedestal at this point. You can also select in the top left corner the face select. Again, loop select, and then you can scale this by pressing S, hold shift, and then press Z. And you can then scale this only on the X and Y axes, like so. So you can have a nice pedestal. Control A to reset the scale so all modifiers are working properly. Return to the front view. And now I have to make this into a object. I make that by using Alt C, Mesh from Curve, made our surf text. And this takes the modifiers that we're in and creates a object. Now, one thing you have to be careful with Bezier curves when you do this is you have to check your top vertices. So I'm going to vertex select and I want to go into wireframe mode. I'm going to press C, select all the vertices in the center, Alt M and merge at center. And this is now one single vertex. I just want to take a look here because we have some clipping issues. So I'm going to add a subdivision modifier just in case. I can also increase the viewport so it's behaving a bit more smoothly. Now if I press S to scale, it's going to also clip through the nook. One of the solutions that can help you out with that is switch to edge select mode and then loop select the bottom edge. And what we can do here is shift S cursor to select it, which will put our cursor to the selected object. And then if I exit edit mode and press shift control alt C origin to 3D cursor, it's going to put the origin of the object to that cursor. So now if I press rotate, it's turning around that cursor. Why did we do that? Well, we did that because now if we scale it, it's not going to clip down. I'm just going to go into my nook. I'm going to scale it so it's barely touching the nook, like so. Perfect. And now it fits. So now if you want to correct that and not have the origin there, just go Shift, Control, Alt, C, Origin to Geometry. And the origin has returned to its previous place. This is going to be our glass enclosure. Now, our glass enclosure is going to be an object that will be using Boolean to divide the clouds. Next thing we want to do is the clouds. So I'm going to go Shift A Mesh. I'm going to select the cube. I'll move it with the G and Z so I can position it better. Also switching to wireframe mode so I can see a bit better what's happening. Control A scale so I have it nice and reset. First I'm going to add a subdivision modifier. You can also add subdivision modifiers by pressing Control 1, 2 or 3 depending on the number of subdivisions that you need. Now we can use 3. Also don't forget that you have to put 3 in render in any case. Now that I have our subdivision, I want to add a Displace modifier. I'm going to click this icon over here, which will allow me to create a texture. And under Type, I'm going to choose Clouds. I'm just going to increase the size to about 0.5, return to my displacement, and I'm going to turn the strength down because it was a bit too strong. Let me just pull this cloud for a second. I'm going to go into Object Mode. Good. 
Now we can manipulate our cloud. We can choose S. So we can press S, Shift X, and now we can scale it just on the Y and Z axis. I can pull it in slightly. I can rescale it again, like so. And now what I want to do in the texture coordinates of the displacement, I want to choose global. Because what happens is now if I move it on the X axis, it's displacing according to the global coordinates. Now that we have our one cloud, let's just position it somewhere where we think it would be good to have it. Now that I have my cloud, I want to set up a Boolean for that cloud. So with the Boolean modifier, we'll make it so that the cloud appears only inside the enclosure and not outside. I'm just going to add a Boolean on the actual cloud. And I'm going to grab this eyedropper object and I'm going to choose my enclosure. Right now you can see it's just on the outside. We can make intersect, so we can choose the operation to be intersect, and we have our cloud intersecting inside of the actual enclosure. Now let's check with G what's happening to our cloud, if everything is working correctly. So for now, everything seems good. Now that we have our cloud working properly, we can duplicate the actual object. So let's go into side view by pressing three on the numpad, shift D to duplicate, and let's move our clouds around. I'm going to shift D again, so I have different positions. Now we can just move our clouds like so, and see that they are actually appearing just inside the enclosure. Now if we close our enclosure and go into solid view, you can see that there are some issues with the material. So we have this very ugly clipping thing over here. You don't need to worry about those because we will be using a volumetric material for the clouds, which won't be noticeable in the final render. But if you want to solve this problem, at least partially, you can do so by using a subdivision surface. So you add another subdivision surface with the viewport and render to two, and then add a bevel. And this bevel, you can set it to angle and then increase the segments to two. Just correct the offset. It's not going to make them disappear completely, but it's going to help you mitigate the problem as much as possible. There are still some issues like you can see here the moment they're not touching properly this is the best we can do now with the booleans inside however we don't need this for our purposes last thing for this tutorial we want to model a very simple grass shift a and we're going to add a path this time i'm going to rotate this path on the y-axis and i'm going to move it on the x-axis so i have it here so i can see it separately I'm going to scale it down and then I'm going to go into these properties over here. So for the curve properties and under geometry, we can have a look at a couple of these settings. Now, these are extremely useful when it comes to manipulating your path. I'm going to add a circle, move it over to the left and I'm going to add a Bezier curve and I'm going to move it to the left. I'm going to select both and rotate them on the x-axis. What I want to do is select the curve that's going to be my grass object. Under bevel, I want to click this eyedropper and select the circle. And under geometry, I want to select the taper object to be the Bezier curve. If I go into front view, I can see that they are both giving the same result as we had with the Bezier and the screw. Now, one good thing about this one is we can edit in edit mode the curve and we can get different curve profiles. Now, in our case, I want to have a chunkier type of grass. So I'm just preparing my model to be as chunky as possible. In wireframe view, we can see that we have a lot of subdivisions. So I want to just drop the resolution to about three can also go into edit mode on the grass path and also choose the vertices inside and turn them around as i please now when it comes to grass i just want to create a very simple group of grass so i'm just going to turn these guys around slightly now you can see that it's still very 
cylindrical. And we can correct that very easily by just selecting our circle over here, going into edit mode. And now we can, for example, scale it down on the Z axis. And what we get is this nice little grass. To finish off, I'm just going to fine tune a bit the form of the grass, like so. Make a duplicate, turn it around. There's a lot of very useful tutorials on making grass in Blender that are very, very quick. However, the best thing you can do is actually invest into Grasswald, into different add-ons that are useful. Just duplicating stuff over itself. I'm just trying to create a nice little group of blades over here. And now when I have something that I'm satisfied with, I'm just going to go into wireframe mode, press C, select everything, control G, and rename this collection to be grass. Now to finish off our grass, I'm going to select the pedestal first, and I'm going to go into edit mode, face select, and I'm going to select the top face. And on the right, I'm going to go into Vertex Group, or rather Object Data Properties, Vertex Groups, and add a group. This is going to be my grass group. I'm going to assign those vertices to that group, and now choose the Particle Properties, and in the Particle Properties, add a particle system. I'm going to change from Emitter to Hair, and I'm going to scroll down over here, and choose vertex groups, density, grass. And this is going to distribute the grass only on the vertices that I've selected. Now, you might see that we have a slight problem. This might be because we haven't calculated the normals. So I'm going to select everything in the object in edit mode, control N to recalculate the normals, exit edit mode, and now we have our hair appearing as it should. Now it's just a matter of fine tuning. I'm just going to drop the length to about 0.07 in my case. And now I want to use the group that we have created with our grass over here. What I want to do now is choose render collection, and I'm going to instance the grass collection. Now you can't see that we have anything happening, but if we increase the scale, you can see that we have a nice distribution. Viewport, children, interpolated, choose the interpolated option. I'm just going to drop it down to 20. We can now just drop down the scale slightly to about 0.95 for me, and I'm going to increase the scale randomness. We have, a, however, another issue that I'm not very happy with, I'm just going to go Advanced, Source, Use Modifier Stack. So this means it takes into account all of the modifiers in our previous steps. And another thing I want to do is just check the rotation because I'm not entirely sure about this rotation over here. I'm going to do it in the Collection menu. I'm just going to select the Object Rotation. And now you can see that if we select, go into wireframe, select our grass over here. And now rotate the grass, it's going to follow the actual grass that we have selected. So if I want it on top, I'm just rotating the grass on the Y axis by 90 degrees. Reselect the pedestal and we can maybe increase the scale slightly so it's just a bit fuller, maybe it goes out slightly and that's it we can also increase the number of the children so it's a bit bushier but i wouldn't go past 20 maybe we can do the render amount to be 50 and leave the display amount to be 10 but i'm also going to drop down this amount so it's not going to interfere or lag our display i'm just going to click this real time viewport which means it's going to hide it from our viewport so i'm going to leave the first lesson here we've successfully made the pedestal the grass the enclosure and the clouds in the next one we'll model the plane and after that we will start animating our scene hopefully this was very useful to you have a good one and see you in the next one